After years of anticipation, RCS Messages is finally coming to iPhones with the release of iOS 18 Beta 2. Personally, I believe this is a major development that will improve the texting experience for everyone, especially for Android users in the US. RCS brings a handful of simple but useful features that have long been in other messaging services, and in this video, I'll show you how RCS Messages will work when texting iPhones from an Android device and go over all the new features you can expect when the full release arrives this fall. On my end, I'm mainly focusing on the Android user experience in this video, but let's briefly touch on some iPhone specifics. You'll know RCS is active when the RCS tag appears in the chat box and within the messaging thread itself. There has been some issues throughout this beta testing period where we'll occasionally switch between RCS and SMS, likely due to a bug that will probably be resolved before the full release. For this test, I'm using an iPhone 12 Pro on AT&T, while my Android device is a Pixel. 8 Pro running on Google Fi. Despite the switching issue that's been occurring, my overall experience has been quite positive and it works as expected. One of the biggest benefits of RCS messages in iOS 18 Beta 2 is the ability for iPhone users to receive higher quality photos and videos sent from Android devices. Previously, these media files would often be significantly compressed and appear pixelated on iPhones when received via MMS, which has been mostly resolved with RCS. Doing some tests between my devices, compression is significantly reduced, resulting in much clearer and usable photos and videos. As a lifelong Android user, it's been pretty surreal it took almost 15 years to see this issue get resolved and I honestly expected it would never happen. Keep in mind, there is still some compression that occurs, although it is a night and day difference compared to MMS. That said, if the highest possible quality is important to you, like sending full resolution, 50 megapixel raw photos, or something of the sort, using a file sharing app or cloud storage service will still be the best method to send high quality media, but what we have now is perfect for casual sharing with friends or family members. Another feature we see from the implementation of RCS on iPhone is red receipts and typing indicators where there are some interesting things to know. In terms of implementation, both apps show red receipt prompts exactly as they would when contacting users on the same platform. On an Android device, that's communicated with check marks at the bottom right of a message, a single check means sent, a double check means delivered, and a color filled double check means the message has been read. On an iPhone, the message shows as delivered when it's sent, and you see the word read with a specific time if the message is opened. However, something strange is that iPhone users cannot disable read receipts for RCS in the beta. This is probably temporary as Apple will most likely add a toggle in the final release, but it's something to note. Typing indicators is another big ticket item we're getting from RCS implementation on iOS. On Android, the indicator shows the user's Google profile photo, which is a nice touch, while on iOS you see a three dot bubbly animation. As a whole, there really isn't too much to say here. During my testing and regular chats, it worked as expected, while in group chats, it was a little inconsistent. Since we're on the topic, let's talk about group chats anyways. In the past, people I've spoken to always had negative feedback when incorporating an Android user into an iOS group chat. Sometimes messages would not get delivered, features like high quality media and emoji reactions wouldn't work, and in general, communication just wasn't as smooth as we were expecting it to be. Thankfully, with RCS on iPhones, things are looking a lot better. High quality photos and videos are now supported. Some more niche items like renaming the group chat works for all users, emoji reactions work perfectly, and it seems interactions as a whole are much more stable. However, there are still some issues that need to be ironed out. For example, typing indicators I find are very inconsistent amongst users. During my testing, it wasn't uncommon to have my iPhone detect typing while my Pixel did not and vice versa, only in group chats, so there's still some work to be done. Overall, things work great, and as the betas progress, I'm hoping things will get squared away. At the end of the day, I'd say this is a great start to what should be a very impactful addition for both iOS and Android users. Of course, we still get this green bubble versus blue bubble situation, but honestly, I really do not think it matters in the slightest. For me, feature parity is what I care about, and as long as we get as much of that as possible, the colors can show however they want, 
I don't care and I don't think other people do either. Objectively, this change brings iOS and Android much closer together when it comes to cross-platform communication, and that's my main concern. I will say there are a few caveats to point out as we move closer to the full launch, and as Android users out there, there are a few things you need to keep in mind regarding our friends on the iPhone side. One, this is currently limited to US only with devices running iOS 18 and only works on the three major carriers like AT&T, T-Mobile, and Verizon in the US. I'm sure this will expand down the road, but it's starting small at least for now. Two, there is currently no end-to-end -end encryption when you text an iPhone user, and that shows by the crossed out lock icon underneath the message. When you text Android to Android within Google Messages, you are using end-to-end -end encryption, but for Apple, they want an industry-wide standard for encryption, and it seems like they'd rather be waiting for that than use Google's solution. The third and final caveat, there will still be a ton of limitations when texting between iPhone and Android devices. While iMessage users can edit or unsend messages amongst themselves, and Google Messages can do the same, these features won't work across platforms. Same goes for direct replies, even though both services support it, it will only be available between users on the same platform, at least during the testing I've done so far. Hopefully this changes down the road, maybe Google can pull some strings to get more features working over time, but for now we really only have the bare essentials with this implementation of RCS. Ultimately, RCS messaging on iPhones is a huge step towards a more unified messaging experience for everyone. As a lifelong Android user, I am truly surprised it took this long, and while there are still limitations, at least in the beta, the core features, especially with high resolution media sharing or even red indicators are insanely helpful improvements. For now, I'm happy and have no complaints at this time, but leave a comment and let me know your thoughts below. Now that this change is on the horizon, do you feel more comfortable switching platforms? Will you be getting rid of your existing third-party apps in exchange for the RCS experience? Share with us in the comments, we'll be reading every one of them. Before we get out of here, I wanted to give a huge shout out to our channel members on screen right now. Simply put, here at 9to5Google, we greatly appreciate the support that you're able to give us as we reach our 300,000 subscriber goal and as we do our best to make the greatest Android content on the platform. Thank you so much for joining us on this journey. We really appreciate every one of you. With that said, I'm getting out of here, guys, as it's time to work on the next project. We never stop here. This has been Jordan Floyd at 9to5Google. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.